Welcome to Mask AI, the best way of creating perfect masks in practically no time. Leveraging the power of Topaz Labs' proprietary machine learning, Mask AI will dramatically improve your masking workflow. Once you've downloaded and installed Mask AI, you can either launch the standalone application or you can use it as a plugin for Photoshop, Lightroom, and Topaz Studio. When you launch Mask AI, you're welcome to follow along with the three tutorials that are presented by default, or let's get started with a simple example. Click on the open button or drag and drop an image into Mask AI. And once the image has been loaded, in the upper left-hand corner, click the Auto Detect Subjects button. And then, once the AI has found your subject, all you have to do is on the lower right-hand corner, click Compute Mask or hit the Enter key on your keyboard. And that's it! You just created your first mask. Now, let's dive a little deeper into all of the features of Mask AI. First, we'll start out by loading this photograph right here, and you'll notice that there is a subject to the photograph, and there's also the sky in the background. Using the latest in AI technology, if we were to click on Auto Detect Subject, the AI automatically finds the subject of our photo, so if we were to now ask for a mask, there's our mask. Now the same applies if I was to reset everything back to the keep, but this time, instead of asking for the subject, we're gonna ask for Auto Detect Sky. So when you click on Auto Detect Sky, there it is, it automatically finds the sky for you, and now here is the mask of the sky. So now let's take a look at some of the other more manual features that are in Mask AI with this example of the dog. By default, Mask AI superimposes a green overlay on top of your screen. That's because currently the default asks for green, which designates the keep color, to be overlaid. So we're going to now learn about the foundation of Mask AI, which is called a trimap. First, green is all the areas that we want to keep. Next. On the left-hand side in our toolbar, we're going to select the blue brush, which is actually called the mask brush. So now you notice as you start painting with blue, we're going to make sure that we cover all of the hair and the, on the edges of our subject with blue. Blue is going to be the color that the computer is going to calculate. All the regions that are in blue are the difficult parts that the computer should work on. Then, finally, the last color in the tri-map is the color red, which is the cut color. Now, you notice that I can either paint with red, or I can change my brush size with the brush size control right here, or I can just use the left and right bracket keys on the keyboard as a keyboard shortcut. And finally, my favorite tool is just the bucket fill for red, and we click on the background, and our tri-map has been completed. So once again, any area of your tri-map which is green designates your subject, which is what you want to keep. Think of it as anything that's solid, where light cannot pass through all the green parts of your tri-map. Blue designates all the areas that the computer should calculate, and you basically want to make blue any area that's difficult, like the edges, hair, a veil, smoke, glass, all the difficult parts should be blue that the computer must calculate. And then finally, red simply designates the background or the area that you want to cut out, that you don't want. So now that you've created your tri-map, you can actually save your tri-map. So under File, I can choose Save As, and you'll notice that by default, TriMap is selected right now. You can give your TriMap a name and just choose Save, and your TriMap will be saved. Now, this is a wonderful feature where if you have spent a lot of time creating your TriMap, just make sure you save it out so that in case there's something wrong with your mask, you can always come back, load your TriMap, and continue to do your work. Now, keep in mind that you can either create Create your tri maps manually, or you can use the AI's Auto Detect Subject or Auto Detect Sky to automatically find your tri map for you. This is often a great starting point for making your tri maps. 
now that we have our trimap, it's time to calculate our mask. The mask mode designates how Mask AI will calculate your mask. By default, the AI model is selected because most of the time, the AI mode will give you the best results. Next, translucent. If you're masking transparent or translucent subjects, such as fine hair, smoke, a veil, glass, translucent is an AI model that was trained with those characteristics. And then finally, contrast. Contrast is from Remask 5, and the mask is calculated simply by the contrast that's between the foreground and the background colors. Now that we have set up our trimap, I'm going to choose contrast and click compute mask, and that's it. Our mask has now been computed. So now the view that is being presented is what's called the two pane view where we can see our original image on the left hand side with the trimap superimposed you can always toggle that trimap on and off with the toggle button that's right here next to show trimap then along the right hand side we can now see what's called the keep image which is showing us exactly the image that was just masked so this is the typical working environment where you'll have two views side by side with your original image on the left and your final results maybe on the right. Now you don't have to necessarily choose this because every one of these views can be changed to be whatever you want to look at. So let's say if I want to look at the original here or I want to switch it over to viewing the mask, which in this case is really remarkable because we could see all of the fine hair that Mask AI has captured in the mask. We could switch over to the keep, which is what we were looking at just a few seconds ago. And then finally, we have our cut view, which is essentially the inverse of the mask, which is great for sometimes just checking your work and seeing maybe areas that you have not masked. So we'll go back to the keep view. And finally, there is the four pane view. With the four pane view, you can see all these different views at the same time. The original, your mask, the keep, and the cut on the screen. And sometimes this view is a great working environment for those of you who need to see these different views together. But let's go back to just our regular one pane view and look at our keep. All right. So, as we look along the right-hand side of our screen, first you can see that you can reset your mask environment either to the mask, the keep, or the cut, which is great for just starting from the beginning. So if you notice you've made a mistake and you just want to start from scratch, the reset buttons are the best way to do it. And then along this uh, corner, we have undo and redo, which are, of course, in every application where you can use command or control Z to undo or redo through the steps you had made. As we move further down in the user interface, the refine tab is where you refine the edges of your mask. So we're going to get a little closer to our mask and actually look at the mask view as we start from the top edge hardness. As we move edge hardness up, you'll notice that the white area that's inside of your mask is growing out. So this is going to create a much harder mask in the interior. Uh, now, in this case, we don't want that just because we like the subtle hair and the details that are around the perimeter of the dog. So we'll keep the edge hardness down. Edge strength is for masking subjects which are going to have a very harsh cut edge to them. Now, once again, since the dog has fluffy hair, there's no need to manipulate the edge strength. Edge shift. Now, to see the effects of edge shift, we're going to switch back over into our mask view. And if, as we move edge shift over to the left, what's happening right now is that we're eating in on our mask. Switching back over to our mask view, we can see that now by manipulating this, we can either edge shift so that the mask edges will grow thicker and thicker and will go beyond the edges of your subject, or they can shrink in. So in times when you need to just eat in on your mask a little bit, edge shift is the perfect tool. 
Foreground recovery and defringe are one of the most important tools in Mask AI. And first, starting with foreground recovery. As we look along the edges where the hair is on our dog, we're going to take the foreground recovery all the way down to zero. And you'll notice that along, along the perimeter, some of the greens and the darker colors from the background are bleeding around the edges. Now, for most masking, you don't want these dark borders around your edges. And that's why foreground recovery actually attempts to find the real colors of the foreground of your subject. So in this case, if we had foreground recovery all the way down, we could see some of those greens and dark colors from the background. But as we bring that foreground recovery up, we can see that those dark colors just disappear. Now, finally, defringe. Defringe is for removing color or chrominance from the edges or the semi-transparent parts of your mask. Defringe is used often in masking veils. So if your background had some color, the colors are going to seep through the veil. But by simply taking defringe up, you're just going to desaturate the semi-transparent parts of your mask and the veil and smoke will look amazing. So that's essentially what the Refine tab is all about. It allows you to refine the edges of your mask. Next, we're going to look at the Background tab. By default, your Background tab starts with None, which means that your background is just represented by the classic gray checkered pattern. Next, one of my favorite features in Mask AI is Blur. With the Blur tab selected, you can now choose how blurry you want your background image to be. So your image started out like this, and a little bit later on, we're going to see how powerful and useful blurring the background of your original image can be. Next, we have Color that allows you to select any color that you want to replace your background with. So uh, just choose any color that makes sense to you and click OK. And then finally, Image. Image is great for just replacing the background with any image that you might have on your hard drive. So I'll select this image over here, which looks beautiful. And some of the controls for changing the background and the foreground when you select image for your background, you can do more than just load an image. You can either transform the image. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's move it over just a little bit. We can flip the image horizontally or vertically. Let's keep it the way it was before. And then once you're satisfied, click on that transform button one more time. Because now you'll notice as we look at our keep, all of these controls for manipulating or adjusting both your background and your foreground become available. So let's say for the background, we want to eliminate some of the color that's there. So we can just bring down the saturation of the background. Or uh, for the foreground, let's say we need to make the foreground a little brighter. Then, of course, we can do that as well. So this is a great way of tweaking the different parts of your composition so you can get exactly the balance that feels right to you right inside of Mask AI. And once you're done making your changes, in the lower right hand corner is the Save button. Here, when you click Save, you're presented with a few options. You can either save your mask as just a transparency, and this can be either a PNG file, or we have a couple of other formats that will give you transparent edges. The composite button is great when you just want to save the final image that you had composited. So if the image that we're working on right now is what you like and you want that saved, you would select composite. Alpha only is, of course, if you're interested in just saving out the alpha or the mask channel of your com composition. And of course, at this time, I'm going to select composite. Uh, we'll give it a name. In this case, it's called dog mask composite. We'll put it out someplace, let's say on our desktop. And we click save. And that's it. The final composition now has been saved. As we finish this basic overview, under the pull downs, when you select preferences, you have a few choices. Allow anonymous data collection will send how you use Mask AI back to Topaz Labs. Persistent edge refinement settings will 
make sure that Mask AI saves the settings that you had under the Refinement tab. So if you like, for example, your foreground recovery to, to always be up, or you like your defringe to be at a certain level for most of your masking, by simply leaving persist edge refinement settings to yes, Mask AI will always remember how you had your refine edge settings so that when you return again, those settings will just be there. Default save as suffix. In this case, every time we save an image out, it's gonna have a dash mask as the suffix. Trimap opacity dictates how transparent the trimap is on your image. And you can change that to be any value you want. Default trimap color dictates how Mask AI will start, either defaulting your screen to the green, the blue, or the red. Photoshop Auto Create Layer. Now, these next two settings are for when you're using Mask AI with Photoshop. So, if you would like Mask AI to automatically create a layer for you in Photoshop, you would turn that on. And then for Photoshop, to save to layer mask is another great option. It's for those of you who are familiar with Photoshop's layer masking, when you turn that on, every time you're done with Mask AI, the layer mask will be populated in Photoshop. And then finally, under processing, under advanced preferences, we can either force Mask AI to work using the CPU or the GPU. Now let's examine how easy it is to blur the background of your existing photos. Now in this photograph, the background seems a little too busy just because the subject is too close to the background. We want to blur the background and it's as easy as, in Mask AI, select the Auto Detect subject. Then here is our trimap that's been already created automatically. Click Compute Mask. Once your mask has been computed, now you can switch over to a single view and let's look at our mask. But more importantly, on the background, choose Blur. Now, by default, this blur seems a little too high, so I'm going to bring the blur down just a bit until it makes it seem more natural. And if there's little areas that Mask AI had left out, you can just go in here and touch up those small regions until you get your mask just right. All right. Now, since the foreground and the background have been separated from each other, feel free to experiment. So let's say here in the background, we, want, we wanted to completely desaturate. Wow, that really separates the foreground from the background. Or if you just double click on any tab uh, title, it will just take your slider back to its default position. And that's how you blur the background of any of your images. In case you're wondering how this compares with Photoshop blurring the background, here's an example where Photoshop is using a Gaussian blur to blur the background. And you can see that there is a glow of her headphones that's around her headphones. And there's a glow of the green of her shirt that's surrounding her shirt as well. That's because Photoshop is basically blurring everything and then putting it into the background. And that's why it includes the colors from the foreground. Now, in contrast, when you look at Mask AI Blur, none of those pesky glows are there. So the results look a lot more natural. Nowadays, sky replacements are very common, mainly because it's so difficult to capture your subject with a beautiful sky in the background. Now, with Mask AI, it's easy and it's fast. So with this photograph here, all you want to do is this time select Auto Detect Sky. So now the AI automatically finds our sky, and if there are little details like the leaves that are around the perimeter that have been left out, feel free to use the blue brush or the computation brush to calculate. Now in this case, we also want to fill or bucket fill the interior of our subject, our tree. And once we get it the way we like, here we go with the compute mask using the AI model. Wow. The mask looks amazing, especially when you look at the actual mask channel itself. Every little fine detail has been captured perfectly. Now let's replace the background with something else. I'll go back to our single pane view. 
We'll switch to our mask view. And then for background, let's select image. Load image. In, our, in my backgrounds tab, let's find a nice orange sky. There we go. Click the transform button to change it to the right size. Now in this case, I noticed that the light is coming from the right-hand side in the photograph, and that's why the clouds in the sky being on the right-hand side are gonna work out perfectly here. The only problem now is that there are some of the colors from the original background are still around the perimeter of the tree. And that's where our foreground recovery, as we bring that up, especially when we zoom in on it, we could see that now none of the colors from the original background are contaminating the edges. And then finally, as we go back to our background tab, um, the only other option that's left here to really make this composite work is fixing the colors. The background seems very warm. It's a very, very orangish, yellowish kind of a background. And so we want to do the same with the foreground. So we can now choose the foreground under the adjustment and take the temperature of the foreground and really crank that up. Wow. Man, that added just so much realism to this composition. And as far as the before and after goes, let's put these side by side. Here is the way that the original photograph came out of the camera on the left and on the right, here is our composition. And especially when you zoom in on it, this becomes really amazing just because as you see the fine details of the small trees across the horizon or the little leaves or the branches that are on the tree, every single one of those details has been perfectly captured using the AI masking of Mask AI. Now let's look at another quick example of sky replacement. Now in this case, the Eiffel Tower seems like it'd be impossible, but when you click the auto detect sky button, wow, it found the Eiffel Tower. And a couple other things that we want to do is make sure that we fill in the Eiffel Tower with the blue, just because remember, blue is the calculation color. And so we want to be able to capture all the scaffolding that holds the Eiffel Tower in place. And finally, when it comes to the red here at the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, make sure you fill that in with red so that the AI is going to consider that correctly as the background. So once we've got this, we can click the Compute Mask button. And here's our mask. I usually like to check my mask just to make sure everything's okay. And there's a little bit that the AI left out here in the middle of the Eiffel Tower. So if we cover that with just a little bit of blue, uh, you can see how the AI is gonna once again just fill that in perfectly. And I'll even cover this area here with a little bit of green. So it's gonna solidify that part of the Eiffel Tower. Now finally, let's replace the background. As we look at a single image and as we look at the actual keep channel, in background, we load an image, which is gonna be here in my backgrounds folder. Click the transform button. Let's make that just a little bit bigger. We'll bring in the sun. And that is amazing. There is our finished composition. One of the things that I love about playing with compositions like this is uh, if the Eiffel Tower seems like it's a little too bright right now, I can switch over to foreground and darken it up. So perhaps this is going to be a silhouette of the Eiffel Tower. But for this composition, let's bring, the, bring up the exposure just a tad so we can see the Eiffel Tower's colors a little better. And because it's being lit by the blue sky, we can cool down our Eiffel Tower just to make it a little bit more blue with the temperature dial over here. And then finally, as we go back to refining our brush, foreground recovery is going to get rid of any of the original background colors that might have been contaminating your original edges. And let's do a quick before and after. This is, of course, on the left-hand side, the way that the photograph came out of your camera. And on the right is sky replacement with Mask AI. Now, let's look at how you'll use Mask AI in Photoshop. As we click open, here's a project that I had saved from before where we want to mask our bride away from the background. 
You'll notice that I have also included a few other potential backgrounds for our image. Once the bride has been selected or the layer has been selected, under Filter, pull down our Toolpaths Labs and select Mask AI. All right, well, we already know how amazing Auto Detect Subjects is, so we'll start with that. And even though the AI has found our bride, it doesn't really know where her veil is. So by using the blue brush, you can easily outline all the areas that are going to be for the veil. Remember, blue dictates what is going to be the areas the computer needs to work on or to think about. So that's why we're going to make the veil blue and the rest of the subject green. Now that we've got our tri-map done, make sure this time we select the translucent model for Mask AI because her veil is transparent and so that's where translucent does the best job. Wow. Now, the mask already looks pretty good, but I always like to check my work by looking at the mask view as well. I could see that along the left-hand side, we do need to touch up just a little bit of the left side of our mask. So I'll draw blue along the left side. That makes the left side look a lot better. And then finally, check your work by looking at the keep. Now, in this case, it seems like as we look on the left, on the original background, some of the greens and the yellows from the background are still bleeding through the veil. Now, this is where foreground recovery is amazing. As you bring up the foreground recovery, that's going to get rid of some of the colors. And if you still notice there's a little bit of the color left that's from the original background, that's where Defringe is going to desaturate any of the colors that are in the semi-transparent parts of your mask. And once you're happy with it, you click Apply. And wow, there it is. Here's our final mask. Now, please keep in mind that this is the way that your photograph came out of your camera. But now she has been masked perfectly. And of course, you can put her anywhere you want on any background. So to learn more or download your free trial, visit topazlabs.com forward slash mask AI.